So I picked up the Galaxy Watch about a week ago, and I've had enough time to get accustomed to its features, uh, use it, and just wanted to give you my overall impressions on what this device means to me at this point in time. So let's go ahead and dig right in. Welcome to Tech Jungle. Here you can find news, reviews, and up-to-date information on some of the wonderful technology existing in our world today. And one piece of wonderful technology is the Samsung Galaxy Watch. Right off the bat, the first thing I noticed when I took this out of the box is the, the weight of the watch. It feels, it feels like a premium watch. It feels like a, a classic timepiece. You know, maybe not as high end as maybe a Rolex, but you feel the weight to this watch. And when you put it on your wrist, you'll, you know it's there. Um, and that's something that I you know to each his own. If you feel like you wanna buy a watch that is going to feel like a normal timepiece, then, then this one is it. Uh, if you're looking at something that's more just to, to track your fitness levels, then maybe a Fitbit or you know an Apple Watch or something like that that's a little bit smaller um, and not so substantial, maybe that's something you're looking for. But for me, I'm actually looking for a watch that can do all those things, that can track my fitness, um, that feels like a watch on my wrist, especially when I want to go out and, and maybe dress up um, you know, my wardrobe a little bit. I want to go out there and just look a, bit, a little bit more fancy, you know, wear a nice t-shirt or a nice, you know, button-up shirt, you know, nice pair of jeans or slacks, whatever. You can go out there and you can use this and it's, it's a multifunctional watch. You know, you can take it to the gym, you can take it out to the nightclub, you can take it, you know, to work and you can find ways to dress this up, especially since there's no proprietary bands here. Now, you can replace the bands with any, you know, any band that you want. Uh, leather bands or you can get you know uh, the you know stainless steel bands or even ceramic bands to to dress up this watch i think uh when i do start to switch out bands i'll probably go with uh, some leather bands to make it look a little, a little bit classier so overall my first impressions when i took this out of the box was yes it feels like a classic timepiece and this rotating bezel is pretty neat and and the buttons here you know this is one one area that I wasn't 100% uh, satisfied. I feel like there's a little bit of give. I'm not sure if you can see that. There's a little bit of give right there. Uh, the buttons feel just a little bit squishy. Um, and you know, when you're buying a $400 watch versus you know maybe a $1,000 watch, there are some corners that will be cut. And also this this textured rubbery finish. It doesn't feel like maybe like a premium watch. It you know. And this is probably my, my biggest gripe is maybe the way the buttons feel. Overall, everything else feels solid. And the buttons are responsive. I mean, they're, they're clicky, they're responsive. I just wish that they were just maybe a little bit more, uh, had, had, a, had a better fit and finish to maybe just overall make this package look like a complete package. And, uh, and so that's my only little gripe as far as the, the design itself. Uh, everything else, the, the, band, the, the band that it comes with, the silicone band is comfortable around the wrist. Um, and these quick release, uh, little this little quick release mechanism uh, works really well. And so what I'm thinking is when I do purchase some more leather bands and, and some more, and maybe like a chain link band or whatever, um, I'll go ahead and get the quick release function with those instead of just getting a normal, you know, where you have to kind of use a, a flathead screwdriver to, you know, to, to pry it off every time you want to. Because I've had a watch, a stainless steel watch before, probably like most of y'all, and if you're switching out bands, what will start happening is you'll get scratches in the inner part of this area here. And you know, over time it just may just not look as appealing. Now going to the back of the watch here, uh, you see that you do have the heart rate sensors and fitness sensors here. Uh, so when, you, when you're tracking your fitness, let's see if I can go here. So you know, just rotating the bezel here. I love the sound of the, the bezel itself. I mean, if you can hear that, let me get it close to the mic. I love that sound. Uh, so yeah, if you go to your heart rate, let's say, and you want to you want to measure it, you'll see that you'll have the light come on. Let's see if I can get it to do it. There you go. So that light will flash it'll emit a little light on your wrist and, and these, these small sensors here will pick up your heart rate. I know that it, I noticed that it works the majority of the time. I mean, right now it looks, it's saying that it's 132, obviously, cause I'm not 
wearing on my wrists, but uh, typically it, it measures my, my heart rate fairly accurately. Um, at the gym, it starts to slow down, I think, because you know when you're at the gym, you start getting sweaty. I think the, the monitor here is it's, it's harder to read on maybe uh, you know sweaty skin or whatnot. Um, but you know there's there's uh, it's not that bad. I'll just say that it's not that bad. So overall, um, yeah, the the functionality of the watch, you know, when, when you're going through the the apps here, I mean, it's, it's you know quick response here. I think you can also flick here. Yeah, you can flick through. What I try to do uh, personally is I try to keep my fingerprints off the glass as much as possible because yeah, you know, this is a fingerprint magnet. When the display is turned off, you will see finger smudges all over the screen but I mean it, it comes with the territory right I mean when you're using a, a device that's replacing a timepiece but it's also doing so much more and it's acting almost like a secondary phone or a secondary screen for your phone uh, you're gonna have uh, some you know some things you have to work with and one of them is is constantly you know keeping this the screen clean because you will be pressing on it occasionally to get through menus um, but you know it is what it is honestly uh, you know, after a week, I do feel like this watch um, has integrated well into my daily routine. Uh, I'll be honest, I, I nev I've never had a, a Samsung watch before, but I did have uh, the iPhone and an Apple watch for about a year paired together. And um, at first when I got the Apple watch, I was reluctant uh, to really embrace it. I was almost about to take it back to the store and just get my money back. But, you know, over time, just wearing it every single day, taking it to the gym, you know, using it to, uh, you know, see notifications, respond to them quickly, um, it really became something that um, just I used every single day. And so I charge it at night, wake up in the morning and, and put it on. And another thing about this, this particular watch itself, the, the Galaxy watch, is that the battery life on this thing is incredible. Uh, you can get, I would say on a, typical day uh, if you're if you're using it and you're tracking stats and you're getting notifications maybe responding to them this will last you about two and a half days maybe um, for me to play it safe I, I charge it every night but I think you could probably go two straight full days without having to charge it um, if you're using this this watch on, on a daily basis um, now there is a function here if you go into the settings if you go to, let's see, where is it at here? You can go to battery and you can go to a power saving mode. And here you can see that if you go to power saving mode, it'll get you, um, you know, six days here. But if you go to the watch only, look at that. I mean, this watch only, if you just go to the watch only where it turns all the other functions off and the screen stays black for the majority of time, if you press the home button, you will be able to see the, the time. If you just use that function alone, this watch will last, you know, dang near 38 days, which is pretty cool. However, I mean, if you're just using it as a watch only, it's gonna become a boring timepiece. And, you know, to me, honestly, I would just rather have a timepiece. You know, a, 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 a typical, you know, standard mechanical timepiece if I'm just gonna be using the, the the device just to track my time but you know if you're caught in a pinch and maybe you're still needing it just as a watch then yeah you can put this function on here and it turns everything else off and all you have is just the the display uh, for a clock and and that's it it's, it's kind of boring but you know it does give you that that option so you know kudos to Samsung for just leaving all the options on the table for you to to use at your disposal uh, this quick notification panel, this drop down panel, when you swipe down from the top, you get you know the battery saving mode, you get airplane mode, you can go and, and look at your, your calls, you have your do not disturb here up in the, in the top right corner. Here down here, this little clock symbol, this is your always on display, so if you turn that off, when, when the watch is turned off, when you like flick your wrist, the, the entire screen will just turn blank. Um, if you if you see this little blue indicate indicator here, then what happens is the the always on display is is activated. And so me, you know, I like keeping it on, and I think if you keep the always on display on, 
all the time, then you're gonna get about two days worth. If you turn this off, you'll probably extend it to about three, three, almost four days. Here you have your quick uh, settings to get to your brightness, your screen brightness. So for me, I typically wanna keep it at a 10. When I'm indoors and I'm in a dark environment, I'll probably you know bump it down to about a seven or a five. But see, when you do that, it does get pretty dark. Okay, then moving on, so you have this other option here. This is the theater mode here. So when you, when you kick that in, it'll, it'll turn the display off once you put your palm over it. And once you turn it off, it'll keep the display off. Even when you get notifications, you'll, you'll probably feel a, a vibration in your wrist, but the screen won't turn on. So if you're in the, in the movie theater, or you're in a dark environment, or you're at a meeting and you don't want the, the display to be a distraction to someone else, then, then turn theater mode on and you know, you'll know you feel the notification, but you won't see it. And the only way you'll be able to turn on the screen is actually pressing the home button. So that's a pretty cool feature to have in case you're in an environment where this could be a distraction to other people. And then obviously this little deal here, this is your, your settings, your full settings here. And you can go and you know change the watch faces, you know, you can go in here and also change the always on feature here. Um, there's plenty of options here and you know in, in a later video I'll go ahead and just dive deeper into all the options that you can you can do with this watch here. But it, it does Samsung does provide you with several ways to customize this watch and make it yours, make it feel like yours and, and kind of adapt to just different environments. And so I, I think that it's great that Samsung does give you the option to, to really make this a multi-purpose device and so really my first week's impressions I feel like this is something that I, I will keep and just keep on using uh, the thickness of this let me just go ahead and put my phone up now my phone's in, in, the, in the Samsung case but you can see here that the thickness is about the same now this is the uh, this is one of the the drop protective cases here that has a kickstand I think I reviewed this on a previous video uh, you know check the link up top um, but yeah, they're about the same thickness here. And if I take the case off, let's see. Take the case off. And the thickness of this case and this watch, you can see the watch is probably about phone and a half thick. And this is the iPhone, uh, this is the Note 8, excuse me. All right, and just to dive into a couple other things. When you when you pair this up to your phone, it, it pairs up pretty quickly. I, I would say within five minutes, you're gonna have this watch up and running. Um, and then when you when you do have this phone on here, and you pair it up, let's go ahead and get into it. So, so now, that, now that I have the, the Galaxy Watch app, activated on the phone and I, now what you can do is you can actually go to the watch faces you can you can go ahead and change the watch faces themselves and you'll see them change pretty much automatically on the, the watch here and see some of these are ones that I've downloaded uh, from the Galaxy App Store uh, and, and some of these are pretty cool I've actually kind of got addicted to, to picking up a couple of these some of these are a dollar you know some of these are two dollars but I think they're pretty cool and see, it changes pretty quickly. And the, the stock apps, I think, the stock watch faces, you have plenty of uh, uh, ways to customize, customize those on the fly. Let me do something like that, just make it super big. Me personally, I like to keep it looking more like a natural or a standard timepiece. And then here, at, over here in, in the uh, the top left over here, I'm sorry, the top right, this is all your, your settings here. So the settings that you have on the watch, you have them pretty much right here as well. So I think that's awesome that you can change, you can change them a lot easier uh, on the phone and then it'll translate over to the watch a lot quicker versus having to kind of navigate and use your you know your finger and go through you know through the entire menu here you have everything at your disposal on your phone and you know it's just a bigger screen a lot easier to navigate through the menus 
So yeah, I think honestly, we're getting closer and closer to replacing the standard timepiece that we've been using on our wrist. And, and Samsung just gets us one step closer with the Galaxy Watch. And you know, to me personally, uh, if we're simulating something that we're replacing, so if we're, if we're simulating a, an actual timepiece and, and providing watches that look like a custom or a, a standard typical mechanical timepiece, then we want, we want it to look almost as close to that uh, original product as, as possible. And so, you know, I love the Sam. I love the the, the the screen brightness here, and I love how colorful the the screen is. My other gripe that I would have is that the resolution wasn't bumped up from the previous version. So if if you do have a Gear S3, the resolution is exactly the same. It's 360 by 360, so it's not as sharp. I mean, it's just as sharp as the Gear S3. And to me, if if you're looking to to replicate you know, a timepiece, uh, you know, a real timepiece with, you know, mechanical face and everything, then what you want is, is a higher resolution so it looks almost identical. I mean, it'll be hard to pixel peep and find. Here you can still see little little pixels here and there, and if I zoom in, I'm not sure if the, the camera will be able to capture it, but let's see. Let's get a little bit closer. I'm not sure if you can see the individual pixels um, on camera here, but yeah, they're they're still there. It's not uh, as sharp as your your phone. If you got a Note 8 or a Note 9 or you know a Galaxy S9 Plus or S9, uh, you know it's not the the pixel density is not up to par with with the phone. And I get it because you know to have higher a higher pixel count, what you're sacrificing is battery life because you're going to need more. Um, more battery to, to push, more power to push those pixels, right? So, you know, there is a rule there where if, if, you, if you're sacrificing one thing, it's to, it's to save another thing. So I would prefer to have, a, you know, a good battery life over having a, a super high resolution, at least at this point. I'm hoping in Samsung's next iteration of the Galaxy Watch that they do, a, they do bump up the, the screen resolution and just make it look that much more realistic. So, uh, right now, this is my first impressions of the Galaxy Watch. It's, it's a great watch. You know, I would recommend it if you haven't had a, a Galaxy Watch before or a Gear S3. I would go ahead and jump right in. If you do have a Gear S3, I don't know if it's that big of a bump. I mean, I haven't owned one before. I mean, I've seen them in stores and whatnot. Um, but you know, if you're looking, if you're you know an adventurer and you go outside and you don't really want to dock your your watch every night, then maybe having a watch with a better battery life is all that that causes you to to go ahead and upgrade uh, if if you're looking for something else maybe like you know performance or screen resolution or whatnot then I don't think upgrading to the Galaxy watch uh, at this point is the best option but I leave that up to y'all just wanted to throw you my opinions and my impressions and so yeah this is the Galaxy watch and stay tuned because I will go ahead and provide more information on this watch. I'll dive deeper into the settings. I'll probably go ahead and review some watch bands as well. So this is Tech Jungle. Please subscribe if you haven't. And I will see you on the next one. Y'all take care. Bye.